Hey YouTube, Liam here. This is now my second YouTube video in which I'll be showing you my old fashioned video game console collection. Now in this video I thought I would show you a lesser known console, well lesser known to the majority. Obviously it did have its own fan base and I'm sure there are a lot of people that may see this video and will know straight away this console anyway. But it was called the Mattel in Television and it was released worldwide basically in 1982. It was released in the United States in 1980 and a test market in the United States in 1979. But sadly it was discontinued in 1984 because it suffered the same fate as most video game consoles did back then with the video game crash. Now I'm not going to go into too much information or much information at all in fact about the video game crash. That's not what this video is about. If you want to know about the video game crash then go onto Wikipedia, look it up on Google. But in very very brief it was a time when there was a lot of video game consoles around at the time. So many in fact that people just lost faith in video game consoles and just stopped buying them and a lot of companies went bust and a lot of companies went bust indeed including unfortunately Mattel's in television not Mattel the company itself because that's obviously a toy maker but they did have a subdivision that made the Mattel in television which I'm going to show you now and that just didn't manage to last through the video game crash so here's the Mattel in television hope you like the review okay so, this is the Mattel in television. I don't know whether I would consider it to be an unusual looking console or not, uh, because a lot of the 70s consoles looked what I would, well, what you would consider by today's standards to be unusual anyway. But this is the Mattel in television. So, I'll start, I think, basically with its controllers, which, yes, are these things here on the side, which do come away, like this. And depending on the game, you would either use the keypad or this disc or both. Now the controllers, unlike most consoles, including the Atari 2600, which was released before this console, the controllers do not come away. So if your controller breaks, you're knackered. Now the keypads on these controllers here were very very similar to the console in my last video which was the Atari Jaguar. Now the reason why I say they were very similar is because the games required overlays which I'll show you in just a moment. The overlays of course were pieces of paper or plastic or whatever they may have been made of which fit over the keys and tell you exactly what the keys do in those games. So as you can see the second controller here no chance, by the way, for three, four, five players or anything like that with this console. Now, if I am incorrect, by all means, leave a comment and tell me. I do like to learn. Right, so I'll show you some of the games and how exactly the overlays work. Yes, this is just a small example of the games. I'll start with, oh, let's say this one. What an exciting name this one's got. Math Fun. I bet there were many, many kids that woke up on Christmas to find that they had math fun as a Christmas present. They probably, oh, I don't know, set fire to the house after getting a Christmas present like this. Who knows? Anyway, this is one of the overlays. So as you can see, take it over here. Yes, it does slide in at the top here. But I'm not going to do that because I've only got one hand spare because, yes, I am holding the camera. But they were basically set on top like that, and as you can see, they tells you exactly what the console and sorry, what the controller will do. I'll put that one back in there for a moment. I'll show you the game properly now. Right again here, another overlay. It sits on top. Only a few buttons used on that one. Some games did exclusively use this disc. Some games exclusively the keypad. Some games both. Now. There isn't really much else to say about this console. It was, in terms of graphics, it was very similar to the Atari 2600. And for those of you who have no idea what the Atari 2600 is, shame on you, but uh, I'll tell you anyway. It was in the days of games like Pac-Man. And not far off, in fact, games like Pong. And if you've never heard of either of those two games, then I'll say Space Invaders. 
if you've not even heard of them, then you shouldn't even be watching this video really. Now, moving on to the games. Here we are. And the games. Not exactly got great labels on them, it's just literally, and it's the same with all the games, which I'll show you in fact in a moment. Just shows you the name of the game. Same with Math Fun, how exciting. Soccer, you can tell that was made in the United States for the fact that it's called Soccer. There's the overlays, there's the instructions, and woohoo, there's the game. Obviously, if it was made over here in Great Britain, then it would have been called Football, because that is clearly football. Uh, there we go, another game, some more overlays, no instructions in that one sadly, but oh well, with a game like Burger Time, who needs it? Buzz Bombers! There we go, overlays, instructions, game. It's the same pretty much with all of them, well I say pretty much, it is the same with all of them. Now, one big gripe I do have with the Intellivision is where you insert the game. It is extremely similar to the NES. Now the NES is a brilliant, brilliant console. In fact, it's my favourite one of all time, so I'm not going to diss the NES. But, for those who ever had an NES, they would know that you have to insert it side on. Here we are. This is where you insert the game, and I'm going to get the game to hand now. Just to show you, so I'm going to quickly set the camera down there. There we go, game goes in there. Not going to force it all the way in because I'll push the console off the other end of the table. I'll show you from the top. There we go, it goes in that way. Now the reason why I hate games that go inside on, for those who used to have systems like this, is that gravity basically makes the game fall down which means that it doesn't connect with the connector properly. Whereas games like the Super Nintendo, sorry, systems like the Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, uh, Nintendo 64, even Atari Jaguar, you push the game down like this. So obviously the gravity helps the game stay in. I just don't like consoles where you have to force the game in side on. I'm not very fond of that. Now, this is again just a small amount of the games that I've got. Um, very, very briefly in terms of the connection. This is obviously just the normal plug for it. It's connected to the system so you can't take the plug out. And it comes with the same sort of TV connection that you get with pretty much any system back in the 70s, which is just your normal RF, which unlike today where you use a HDMI cable or even a SCART lead, meant you had to actually tune the computer game system in, which could be quite annoying depending on the TV that you used. Now this came with my Intellivision. I have had this for donkey's years. I have no idea what it is, what it's for. I've never needed it to set up my system. If you know what this is, if you know what it's for, please comment, let me know what this is. That'd be brilliant, I'd love to know. Because all I know is that I can get this system working with just the RF and the power. And at no point do I actually need this. So that is, again, as I did say at the beginning of the video, a brief overview of the Intellivision. I will, again, hopefully do more of these videos just to show you some old-fashioned video game consoles. Right, so there we go. There's your games your overlays, the instructions, the system itself some strange thing there. Now I do know what this is it's basically just an RF but obviously it's a switch standard switch box so you can switch between your TV and your game system rather than having to pull out the RF so that's nothing nothing creative there but if you do know what that is please tell me okay so there we go that is the Mattel Intellivision now one final thing before I do leave this video, there was the Intellivision 2 which was also released. I think there may have been an Intellivision 3 but I'm not entirely sure. Now the Intellivision 2 was more or less the same as this except for a couple of differences. Slightly smaller in size, you could remove the controllers and the controllers weren't slightly raised like these ones were. 
Now these ones are good as they're raised because even without looking at them you can feel the keys. Whereas of course the Intellivision 2 keys were not raised so you did have to look at them to know which ones you were pressing. Which was not a good idea. So the Intellivision 2 being able to change the controllers was a plus. Not being able to feel which keys you were pressing was a step backwards. But that's only in my opinion. People may disagree. They may prefer the Intellivision 2 but... Who knows? So there we go, that is the Intellivision. So there we go guys, that was my brief overview of the Mattel Intellivision. Hope you enjoyed it. I will hopefully be doing more videos of course. I was starting to enjoy this one in fact. A lot more than I did on my first video, so maybe I'm starting to get the swing of it. Who knows? If you like this video, same as I said in my last video, please by all means rate the video, whether it be a thumbs up, thumbs down, comment, positive or negative, really don't give a shit. One way or the other I'm happy, it just means that you've watched the video or at least clicked on it, so I'm happy with either. If you really do like the videos, please subscribe, help support the show, I am hoping to make a lot more in the future. Alright, until then, until my next video, take care everyone, bye bye.